Today on the 167 podcast, we are speaking all things Christmas. Ho, ho, ho. We're talking about how can we have the best Christmas in 2020 after a year that's been absolutely crazy. We can't wait to have you with us. There's a saying in the Bible that that is Hello and welcome everybody to the 167 podcast. It is episode number seven. Seven. It is episode number seven. Can you believe we've gotten to episode number seven? And none of us, nothing bad has happened yet. Not yet. Well, no, it won't. Seven is actually a good number. Seven is the number, should we say it's the number of, I don't know if I could say that. I think it's a holy number. It is a holy number. We can say that. It is. Welcome to episode number seven. Everybody that is joining us either via video or listening uh, via the podcast. If you are new here to the 167, huge word of welcome to you. Uh, We at the 167, what our podcast is all about is adding value to the rest of your week. There's 168 hours in a week. One of those um, is probably spent in a house of worship somewhere in a church. But we know there is 167 other hours in your week where there is some really good things that can take place, some value that can be added. So that's what we like to speak about here at the 167. My name is Phil. I'm joined by Swen. That's right. Stephens. Swen Stephen. You do have a full name. I do have a full name. (laughs) I'm always glad I never got a middle name. Okay, so you don't have a name. So I'm straight up. No, no. Because if you think about it, whoever uses the middle name? No, like Samuel's I, got a middle name, you my know what, son. When someone uses their full name, I just think they're they're just an affluent. Just I, I just I, honestly, I just think you're like if you think of that typical oh, American like, like rich jersey around the shoulders, he'll yes. give his full name and it'll be something like Michael or for sure or Clarence. Well, it's, it's actually something that you can grab hold of if you're in trouble. If you if you three names this person and and you call them out three yeah. names, yeah, 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 yeah unless it's like Junior or like the third, yes. Uh, so Samuel's middle name is Preston. That's a nice one. So that's very, nice we try to go name. very like, you know, so if he, if swanky. He, so if he's hearing Samuel Preston Stephens, he is in deep trouble. He's probably, yes. He's probably saying, who's Preston? Yeah, yeah. He's very, who's that? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, if you've got a middle name, really glad that you could join us and be with us today. Let us know what your middle name is. We would, I'm actually interested. Yes. Because you get some very interesting middle names. We do. You do get a lot of, mine is Connor. Basically, I'll give you the story behind oh, my right. name real quick. I forgot you had one. I do. Philippus Connor could see um, it. was going to be Philippus Cornelius, as, as the listeners might be Maximus. in watches. They're Maximus. They might be hearing, oh, okay, so Phil's got Afrikaans parents. I've got an Afrikaans dad who comes from Clavert, and then I've got an English mom who comes from Pinelands. So she wasn't too happy with the full-on, full-blown Afrikaans first, middle, and surname. So she said, no, 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 he needs an English middle name. So apparently there was a good-looking guy on the young and the restless at that time, uh, Connor, <laughs> while she was in the hospital, and, and there go, there go. That's the how you name. became. That's the story. <laughs> That's the you story got, right You were named after a crush. After my mom's crush. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's really weird that you put it like that, but indeed... <laughs> Let us know. Uh, I can give you the name. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know what your middle names are That's if you're cool. joining us. We want to thank everybody uh, for just the awesome feedback that we've been getting. All of the DMs. I'm making it sound like it's millions, but we actually have been getting quite a few really positive uh, feedback um, on the podcast. People That's that right. have been enjoying it. We really appreciate it. It really mm. it means a lot. It helps us. It helps us just get better and, and get encouraged in what we're doing. So if you are listening to this, uh, watching it, please feel free to subscribe uh, to rate the podcast on the platform that you're watching and leave comments, leave feedback. Good. We love all of it. Um, and we're very excited about today. Good. Um, at the time of recording, we are now entering, or we are in December. Mm. We're in the Christmas season. So today we are going to be speaking uh, a little bit about Christmas and what does Christmas look like um, after 2020? What does Christmas look like after a year that ev- everything's changed, everything's different? Uh, is Christmas different? Is Christmas changing? And uh, we're very excited. I think we're going to name this podcast Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, And we're going to get Swen bells, to rock. sing a little. Jingle yeah. Bells. Yeah, yeah, jingle. <laughs> Whenever I think of that, I think of like, it's, it, it just sounds dodgy. It d- well, yeah. You, you, you it's said a like dodgy that. song, yeah. No. <laughs> It's, it's Jingle Bells. <laughs> okay, but yeah, probably, yeah, anyway. But uh, yeah, it's Christmas.
Christmas 2020, and obviously if you're listening to this in or watching this in yeah, January, in. February, forgive us, there's a whole host of other podcasts there which are. are going to be really helpful yeah. and beneficial to you. Yeah. But if you're lining up before Christmas, mm. then how do you celebrate Christmas in a season where... I think people have had less celebrations. Yeah, big time. I, I think there's been other things. Maybe people have, have had some part. I know yeah. our neighbors have had loads of parties. But <laughs> um, but how do you how do you say like Christmas? For me, honestly, I love Christmas. Yeah. I love Christmas time. Christmas, but Christmas has become very commercial, and I'm not hating that. I'm yeah. like, hey, the more the message of Jesus gets out there, the better. Yeah. But something unique that has happened this Christmas, at least where we live. Yeah. There are some decorations out. Yeah, there are. We you got seen, decorations you seen, you seen here. You've seen some lights. You've seen some lights on houses. But the the whole like Christmas Carol vibe is just like it's down. tanked. It's yeah. just nosedived. Yeah. I don't know if that's because Black Friday, and so they only wanted to do stuff after Black Friday. I mean, I haven't been in the shops since then. Yeah, sure. But I I, I can't I can't tell you that I've been listening to any Christmas carols outside of the stuff that's on my iPhone. Yeah. Because Samuel listens to Christmas carols all the he loves them time. Right, Carey. Just, no, just no, no, no. More like the Jesus Christmas uh, okay, carols. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, no, yeah. no, I hear you. No, I, I would have to agree. I think that Christmas this year does feel different. And I think that um, it's definitely along the lines of celebration. It's along mm. the lines of people are, are, I just think people are hesitant and tentative to, to be excited about stuff and to, and to be expectant and, 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 to, and to be excited about a Christmas season where I actually still think there's a lot to be excited about yeah, and a yeah, lot to be expectant sure. about. So I think what, what, what is great to speak about and what's great to do during Christmas time is to just remember kind of, we, we say it every year, but the reason for the season. The reason. Um, to, to remember that behind every Christmas, yes, there are the Christmas carols. Yes, there are the decorations. There mm. are the uncles dressing up like Santa Claus and there's so much fun and, and getting family together. I know probably less people are probably traveling this year because of restrictions and protocol. But what's so important to do every single Christmas time and every single time of the year, this time of the year specifically, is to remember kind of why we do this, why we celebrate Christmas, and to remember that that hope was born wow. uh, in this time. Yeah. This was the moment when all hope was lost. And it's so funny, 2020 almost feels like a year where all hope has been lost sure. for some people. So I think Christmas is coming at the perfect time mm. because this is just a reminder for people that those who have lost hope this year, those who have lost jobs, those who have lost loved ones, family members, that hope has a name. Mm. His name is Jesus, and we can celebrate that hope because that can't be taken away. Yeah, good. We could get more limit. We can get more restrictions. There could be more breakouts. There can be anything, but no one can take away mm. the hope that we have in Jesus, that He's been born. And I think we need to be intentional mm. about celebrating that. Intentional yeah. about having a great time under all the correct protocol, but having a great time with our mm. families. Uh, attending church services whether that is online or whether it's in person but but hope is is really the heart behind christmas and for me this year that's what i really want to focus on that's good. when i'm with my family it's to say this is the hope that we've got lots has changed in 2020 and i think some things for the better listen i don't want to go back to normal on some things lots has changed but the hope that we have in jesus will never change mm. regardless of what our years look like and that's what christmas is all about yeah for me. I, that's great and i think as a christian it's a it's a good reorientation of what yeah. is Christmas all about. Yeah. Because we say Christmas is about family, and yes, we should celebrate with family. Yeah. Not everybody has a family to celebrate. Doesn't mean you can't have Christmas, yeah. right? Yeah. And think about I'm I'm actually preach this on our Christmas message, so we don't know yet. But um, the guys here, the one six seven, are getting the, the sneak preview. Peek. Well, by the time this comes out, yeah. yeah. Uh, is if even if I look at the first Christmas, the first Christmas was born in a season where they w was hopeless. They were crying out yeah. for a savior they were crying out for hope they were crying that there was no hope god had been silent for 400 years wow yeah and then jesus comes hmm. and that's what we're celebrating we're yeah. celebrating the birth of a savior in the form of a little child born in a manger in a you know um, with wildlife yeah. around them you know it, there was no totally obscure totally, totally obscure. weird nobody knew Not about what people it. were expecting nobody knew about it yeah kings were born in palaces but he was born in a stable yeah uh you know the it wasn't the 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 fragrance of beautiful spices that he was smelling it was the manure yeah it, you know this is like jesus wasn't as you know quiet little baby probably screaming yeah. his lungs out mom and dad not sleeping the nativity scene will tell you a different picture <laughs> i'm the third <laughs> lobster in the nativity scene <laughs> but let's be real <laughs> yeah and, and i think that's 
for me, I'm excited to share a message about the fact that that the first Christmas was not born in a time of prosperity. Mm. The first Christmas was born in a time of desperation. That's so good. And that's, even now, I think we can look to that. That's why we shouldn't, and I think what, what we want to share about is, hey, don't not celebrate yeah. big. I mean, celebrate within your means. Sure. But don't be like, uh, you know, lowball the Christmas. Ah, uh, you know, we're just going to throw a few steaks on the brine. And, yeah. You know, no, man, like, let's, let's go for it. I love that. You look like you could be a, I mean, because you just bought a house this year. <laughs> And sure. that's pretty exciting. It is very exciting. You, you look like you, you might be a like a all out guns blazing decorations in the garden kind of guy. Is that going to happen? We've got our tr- we've got our tree up. I think having the tree up is a great. It just gets the atmosphere and the home ready uh, yeah. for Christmas. So we got our tree up. We want to have the Christmas carols. Uh, we're gonna we're definitely gonna have some family over. I think we're gonna do Christmas Eve at, at my house, which is gonna be nice. We'll have my dad over. My mom's unfortunately in the UK, so my dad will come over. My grandmother will come over, which will be cool. very nice to see her. And I I fully agree with you. I think it is a great time to celebrate. A mm. great time to to reflect to remember but also to say you know this is an awesome opportunity to celebrate with our families and I, I, I love that picture I mean Jesus was not smelling spices and oils it was the manure of the cattle and I think for 2020 that's a, that's a, like what a lot of people are smelling mm. and I think that the best thing about being a believer is to understand that beautiful things can be born in the most obscure places yeah. in the most obscure of situations and I think we could have some of the best Christmas memories this year out of what has been for a lot of people the worst year that they've experienced. Yeah. And you summed it up so well this weekend and it's, and it's, it's just, it's stuck with me. Um, and, and for the people watching, we've just come off a Sunday where we've gone for a miracle offering. It's been, yeah. it's been amazing. And I love what you said about how if you're going to look at it, if you're going to look at it through the world's eyes, it would just be the worst time to do something like this. Mm. Economically, the world has never been, or let's say South Africa has never been in a weaker place or it's been a very long time. It would be the right time now to give it a skip. Mm. But luckily, we don't look at life through the world's eyes. We're always trying to ask God for the God perspective yeah. and to try to see through, see, see things through heaven's lenses. And I think that's what we actually need to do for this time of the year as yeah, well. Yeah, that's good. That God is still on the throne. Mm. God is still good. This is still a season where we can be, and I think we're going to touch on it, we can still be generous. Mm. We can and still be outward looking and outward thinking, trying to reach out to people in a season when the world is saying you need to look after yourselves, mm-hmm. you need to stay hidden, you need to stay covered. Our church has been so generous through this mm-hmm. season and it's been so encouraging. Oh, it has been very to good. see people just wanting to give and wanting to help those around us mm-hmm. in our communities. And I think this is where Christmas presents. It presents two opportunities. Yeah. It presents an opportunity to celebrate, to be intentional about celebrating the hope that we have in Jesus, good. the time we get to spend with our families and it presents an opportunity to mm. love on people, yeah. to love the people that, that might not be in our context, but people need it right now. Mm. A lot of people are hurting. Some people are better off than others. What an amazing time to reach out to somebody, to buy somebody a meal. It's yeah. practical to pay it forward, to get somebody something. I know we're running a, a station at church at the moment, a salt table. We're sponsoring meals for people. Mm. We set a goal. That goal was met in two weeks. Yeah. Uh, and that goal was supposed to run for eight weeks. Our church met that immediately. So we're just going to keep going with it. Well, it it's just the perfect time to do it. It's it is. the perfect time to experience the love of God and to then to demonstrate it for the people around us. Absolutely. I think that's the thing with kingdom culture, though, is that yeah. the culture of the kingdom doesn't change based on what's happening in the world today. Yeah. And in fact, in some ways, we show our faith most when we're doing things that are countercultural, that Very are good. kingdom minded. And so yeah. giving in a season of of lack for mm. many people is kingdom minded in the new testament they took offerings up mm. amongst the the churches for the poor in jerusalem yeah. so and that wasn't from poor from uh, wealthy churches yeah in fact it was for a lot of them were already poor yeah. but they were they had more than other places and as long as we remain kingdom minded we can celebrate christmas and in fact, we can become more like the Lord because yeah. God so loved the world that he gave his son. Yeah. And so, so we can do the same thing. Mm. We can love God so much that we give. Yeah. And that's what I loved about even just the salt thing that was taken mm. up. I love that there were people in our church that said, you know what, we can't let 200 people go without Christmas this year. <laughs> so they gave towards it and yeah. we, we were blown away by, it, by yeah. their generosity. And I think you're right. I think it's it's the fact that we can remember, we can celebrate, we can have hope in Jesus, but it's also a time that we can show practical love yeah. and practical giving. Yeah. So this year you might not be able to buy, you, you, you know, you, you, 
the car or you know yeah, sure. people want to go and buy that Extravagant, that yeah. rolex or the tag <laughs> or whatever <laughs> yeah. for for christmas and yeah. and it can go two ways you could be so down and depressed that you buy it so you can feel better about yourself and then yeah. start the new year off in terrible debt yeah um but if you've got the money go for it uh, but i think you can still go big even if you have a budget yeah you know and i think that's the thing like celebrate full yeah it might mean that you make a few gifts this year. Yeah. It might mean that... Support in local. Support local. Absolutely. Good shout out. Yeah. It might mean that you make some sandwiches this year for people who don't yeah. have food. Yeah. I know there's people who do that already, but I think just that attitude of giving and generosity yeah. is always in the heart of God. Yeah. And even over Christmas time, that's also why people give gifts mm. is being generous. In fact, a lot of the, the early, not the early church, but the Jewish custom around their festivals yeah. was that they still gave gifts to one another. Yeah. And so that that continues on. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Listen, what I love and, and what I think is important is that for these last two or three weeks that we've got of this year, um, a biblical principle that we that we know is, you know, you enter a new season as well as you left the old one. And I think, and, and this isn't a New Year's message, but I think, you know, a lot of people maybe have the idea and the conception that we're going to go into 2021 and all our problems are so far away. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it just isn't, it just isn't. Are you singing now? Yeah, that's how I got a bit well, of Well, you know, you know. I, I, can, I, I can do that. Um, I think what we've got in the next two or three weeks is an opportunity to end this season and to end this year on a really high note mm. and then to actually put in place w the type of season we want to walk into, into 2021. So I think what we can do maybe just in our time together and, and in our conversation is just speak about some pr small practical things that yeah. we can put in place that can add value, that can help people do this Christmas season extremely well. And what we've already spoken on about is like, well, firstly, we, we think people should celebrate. We don't think it's a season where somebody needs to tone it down or, or no. yes, we understand that maybe holidays were planned that now can't happen because of... Uh, legal things and that's fine it doesn't mean you still can't have an amazing time uh, with the people in your life at a home or at somebody else's house or whatever I think the second thing we can do is to live generously over the next two or three weeks time um, I think there are people in our lives and in our context that we can be a huge help to and that we can be of assistance to, that we can love on, that we can mm -hmm. demonstrate the love of God to. And this is what Christmas is all about. You're speaking about giving gifts. I think as we are going into the malls, as we are buying gifts for our family, to think about those that are mm -hmm. less fortunate in this time, to think about those that don't have what we've got, or maybe have had a year that has just been straight out of hell. Yeah. And, and, and think of practical ways that we can go in and help those people and love on those people. Absolutely. I think, I think finding practical ways to do that, I think is absolutely right. I would encourage everybody who's, who's watching or listening today to, if you haven't started Christmas yet, yeah. start it now. Yeah, sure. Because Christmas is actually every day, yeah. but we celebrate it, right? Jesus has come. So yeah. we're always in that celebration phase. Yeah but not to be intentional about it. So decorate, maybe add something that you haven't done before. Yeah. Uh, start playing Christmas carols at home. Be intentional. You know, yeah. um, and I also, I also recommend getting some of the, the stuff like from King and Country or other artists that are actually singing about Jesus. Because yeah. here's the funny thing about Christmas is that, for instance, even in our home, uh, not now, but when I was growing up, like my family wouldn't necessarily have been believers. Mm but we still celebrate Christmas. Yeah. Like how weird is that? Interesting, yeah. How weird is that? That a secular, fans, yeah. yeah, that's the thing. A yeah. secular culture is still celebrating Christmas, yeah. but we're not governed by, we're not doing it just because it's a great holiday. Mm. We're actually celebrating the person of Jesus, that mm. the father sent his son Jesus. Mm. And so I think this Christmas, let's make it as much about Jesus mm. as we can mm. with family, yeah. with friends, yeah. with loved ones. Yeah. And, all the appropriate measures in place. So yeah, like, but, but not to downscale yeah. our attitude. Mm. I think that's the important thing. It is. And I, a great thing about Christmas, while we love Christmas so much, is that it is, like you said, people who aren't necessarily believers are celebrating. Mm. Um, and, and in other years, and even this year as well, uh, we love Christmas time because people are in church. Mm. Uh, it doesn't matter where and what and how. For some reason, uh, uncles and aunties and, and people just go to church. It's almost like a tradition thing, but we'll mm. use that. I mean, we don't mind if you're there for whatever whatever reason if we can if we can get you there god can do something in your heart and we've got some amazing yeah. christmas services that are going to be going this year on christmas eve on christmas day the morning of and christmas day in the evening absolutely online experiences where anybody can tune in with a family to watch to be a part of it and i think that is also a great way to actually be intentional we speak about remembering yeah to go into a service and to actually 
listen to some worship, listen to some carols, be intentional by mm. listening to a message to actually sit and be like, cool, this is, this is the whole heart behind it. I find that, I mean, I've attended a, a service on Christmas Day. Yes, I, I worked for a church for a while, but I was doing that long before. And that was often the thing that would help me so much wow. in remembering, cool, this is, this is what the holiday is all about. You can have the family time, you can have the gift giving. But when I actually got to church, it was that moment to remember, wow, this is such a beautiful day in, in really in the life of our faith. Mm. As Christians, this is the day when hope was born. Totally. When our chance at salvation, when, when heaven became a reality the for us. The rescue plan started. The rescue plan was put in place. Yeah. And, and to, find, to find that, wherever you are, you might not be in our church, you could be a, a, in any church, maybe you don't attend a church. What an amazing opportunity for you to check out church on the 25th or the evening, or the evening before, depending yeah. what church is in your area. Exactly. That provides a space we can sit and remember. Totally, totally. I think it's so good. And, and you know what reminds me, because obviously for our church, I know all churches are doing things differently, but our church will be doing church at home. Yes. Um, and I actually saw somewhere Sorry. online someone saying, church, what's at home for the holidays? Which was quite a cool little take on, on doing church at home, or mm. Christmas at home. Yeah. But um, you can actually share that. And you can include someone else in your Christmas by watching it online with them, even if they're in other places. So yeah. I would like, you know who the first evangelists were? It were the shepherds who, who told people about what they'd seen about Jesus. Yeah. And you don't have to be much to be a shepherd. No. You don't have to be much to share the fact that there's Christmas. Yeah. And it's an easy thing to share now. So you yeah. can still be a part of not just giving generously financially, but giving generously of an invitation that, hey, maybe someone else can get the revelation of Jesus yeah. this Christmas time. Um, and yeah, I think I think that Christmas is going to be a fun time. And I would encourage guys, like I was just checking on my phone here, Luke chapter 2. Mm. A practical step to take this Christmas is actually read through the Christmas account. Like yeah, read through good. Luke, I said Acts chapter 2, Luke chapter 2. No, you said Luke. Did I say Luke? You okay, okay. Luke. Both of them wrote those two books, so that's why I could Ah, <laughs> That's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you can hear about it. You can hear about the story of his birth you can hear about the story of the of the shepherds and the angelic host choir singing yeah and i think just that goes this is why we celebrate yeah. so maybe you know over the next i mean i don't know how how many days will be till christmas when this actually comes out but maybe two three weeks yeah, two, two weeks, three weeks yeah. why not just take every day or once a week and read different parts of Luke chapter two. Yeah. Just in preparation. I think that's what it is. It's just cultivating an expectancy that's and it. a desire and a We've got to do that intentionally. It's it's to start it's to start creating the atmosphere for yourself. I think the parents that are yeah, it it's really you get really special parents that are able to create an atmosphere and expectancy for mm. their kids, even when it can seem like there totally. isn't much happening or there isn't much going on. And I think that's what I love about I think my parents used to do it for us as well, is that it's to create this it's to create the excitement. Yeah. It's to create uh, this atmosphere that Christmas is coming. Uh, this is the time we get to celebrate Jesus. It's the time we get to spend time together and actually reading the account. I mean, we know before Easter, we like to do um, a bit like we like to go through that week yes. before and we'll read through that and, and that provides great, uh, it just gives you time to reflect and to think about it. But with Christmas as well, it's awesome because you get to sit and think about it and yeah. chat about it and to, and to be able to, to, to just really dive into that. And there is, I mean, it. There's, I mean, in, in the in the older church traditions, you got Advent, yes, yeah. right, which is the whole month leading up, in a sense, four weeks before Christmas, yeah. where every week is a specific week in the Advent calendar. Yeah. Where you know we see the Advent calendar as where you open up a day and you get a chocolate out, and you, yeah. you know, but the Advent calendar is something to pause, yeah. reflect, and think. And I think there's something so beautiful mm. and powerful about reflection yeah. and about thinking on Christmas mm. and being grateful for what you have, mm. uh, being grateful for Jesus, mm. uh, thinking about other people in your life, even yeah. a good time of year to start um, reconciling with any family members good, that yeah. you have issues with. Because how are you going to celebrate the birth of Christ yet you still hate your <laughs> whoever? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Because Jesus said, like, if you don't... If you've got a if you've got a gift to come and worship, leave the gift at the altar, reconcile with your enemy, oh, and then come back and continue to worship. Yeah. So like if we celebrate through Christmas but we don't write or at least reconcile with loved ones. Yeah. How, how, how are we ever going to have a good Christmas? No, you can't. I think even just to touch on this, and, and this is something that we speak about as well, we even thought maybe chatting about it today, was that Christmas is an amazing time of the year for some people. 
And then it is a horrible time of the year for other people where, where yes, there's an emphasis on family, but what about the people who don't have family yeah. around? There's an emphasis on, on celebration. There's an emphasis on being together. But what about the people that are struggling mm. uh, with depression? What about the people that are struggling with anxiety, that are isolated, that are alone? And this can be a time for people where it's extremely lonely, where it's extremely tough to, to, to try to get this kind of excitement about yeah. it, to try to do that. And, and the role that we can play in trying to identify, and I think the first step that we can do is to think about our own lives. Mm. Think about the people, the family members that maybe we don't reach out to all that much, that we don't speak to all that much. I've already got you know, people in my mind as you spoke about it. And to reach out to people and to love on people and to try to fix those wrong, it just create. it's just the perfect time of the year for that because it almost makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's like, like hyper-emphasized now. It's emphasized now, it's Christmas time. People almost, and I'm, <laughs> excuse me for sounding weird, but people almost understand you reaching out now yeah. and saying, hey, I know this happened, can we fix that? I know this because just a small little thing like that, Satan can use to bring isolation. Big time, yeah. Satan can use to, to bring division in families where we're all we're focused on and really want Christmas to be is to be a time of, of unity, mm. to be a time where people are coming together and loving on each other. We don't want more and more people every year to be mm. disconnected from their families and to then to doing Christmas by themselves, being lonely. Um, I saw a really cool uh, Facebook, it, it just speaks into this really well. Um, it was a video on Facebook where um, this lady, she, she, got, she thought she was sending a message to her nephew, but she got the wrong number. So she sent a message and said, hi, Christmas at my house this year. This is what we're eating. Uh, so, no. so the guy wrote the guy wrote back. He was a young guy. He must have been 18 or 19 or 20 or something. And he, and he just messaged back like, you know, who is this? <laughs> and the lady wrote, it's grandma. Um, this is what we're eating Christmas at my house. And then the guy said, hey, I'm not who you. Uh, he sent a picture of himself. And he says, hey, I'm actually not who you think you're messaging. Uh, can I still come? And the lady said, of course you can. Uh, my house is always open. And this guy came and went to her house for Christmas. And then he proceeded to go to her house for Christmas for the next five or six years. And then that lady's husband actually died um, a few years after. It was an older couple. And he was at the funeral. He was a part of the whole thing, immediately became a part of these people's lives. Wow. And this guy, obviously, I don't know his background story, but if he was, if he was saying, hey, can I come? He obviously didn't have He a place never had plans. He never had plans, never placed for Christmas. And now just because of an accident... Uh, he was invited, there was a plate there, and he actually developed a relationship. And for me, when I saw that story, it, it stuck with me, is that there's potential to do stuff like yeah. that at Christmas time. People are open to stuff like that. And, 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 and there's, so cool. there's love that can be shown. There's That's love so that cool. can be demonstrated. I mean, we celebrate, obviously, later on at Easter, but, but we celebrate the love that Jesus had throughout his whole life. And now we celebrate his birth. Surely we can demonstrate that love. That's love very cool. I love that. Yeah. I love that. That's so powerful, man. And I think, yeah, I think... I think mm. What a great opportunity! I would I would encourage everyone to jump onto that as an uh, as an opportunity. Yeah. Maybe you know somebody who's actually got no plans. Yeah, reach out. Yeah, you know, invite yeah. them. And I think I think there's definitely something to be said for. I think celebration mm. is an act of our faith. Good. Yeah. I think celebration mm. uh, also it deals with bad heart attitudes. Yeah. I mean, on a celebration, like I'm not talking about partying your life away. I'm talking about <laughs> actually saying, "Well, I." I'm going to, I'm choosing to be joyful. Despite. Yeah. Despite. I'm choosing to be happy yeah. because of what Jesus has done for me, mm. that he came for me, that I am loved, that I'm not forgotten. Mm. He hasn't left me alone. Mm. And even just that sharing, I mean, I was, I was, just, I was remembering, because I'm, I'm planning my Christmas messages now, yeah, and I'm, I've got a ready. message with uh, another church this coming weekend. And just thinking about um, how the, the very first Passover meal, uh, the Jews were instructed to, hey, there's a lamb for every family, mm. but if a family doesn't have, share. Mm. And I think that's the, that's the spirit of Christmas, mm. is like, let's not let anybody this year not celebrate Christmas that we know of. Yeah, good. Because I think people have been I hit economically, that. people have been hit emotionally, yeah. um, and some people are just downcast. And I think they just, that encouragement, I actually thought next year what we should do is we should do uh, like a whole like Christmas countdown and every week is just like over the top Christmas. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm talking Christmas trees, Santas, I'm talking, yeah. you know, giveaways, like yeah. every single week just to get 
people's attention that, hey, this is an exciting time of year. I mean, yeah. so far I've already got my Christmas background on my phone. I can phone. see that. I see you the know? stars. Yeah, yeah. I was, I had like a vision statement and everything. I'm like, you know what? It's Christmas. Let me change it. Yeah. Um, just for that whole attitude thing and mood and, and moving towards it was like fun and looking forward to it. I love that we did, um, what was it, two years ago when we did that spit bry? Oh, man. We did a spit bry, uh, for those listening on in our church, we our church did a spit bry on the 23rd. That was crazy. It was amazing. We had so much food and people came to church and then straight afterwards, um, we all shared a meal together and people bought tickets. I think we should definitely sign like that again. People bought tickets and were a part of that. That was so much food. People were going around too. And but it's not, it was like, tasty it's not like the food. quantity affected the quality at all. No, 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 no. It ever. was amazing. Yeah. And it was cool because I've actually never had a Christmas party with that many people before. I mean, yeah. there must have been 100. Yeah. 100 people, I think, having no, a Christmas no. meal? Oh, yes. No, the outside. Pe- the people that stayed? Yeah. Yes. No, without a doubt. Because we no. had, we had was, it was two services. Yes. And we had it after the second one. Yes. And we had all those people come together. Yeah. No, we, or did we have Oh, no, we had one? one big service because yes, we, we changed the hall that's up. that's right. So that's we're having right. like a revelation going on. <laughs> it's like, bing. Excuse the viewers. I remember that. It was one that. big service yes. and then we had the, the, the bry afterwards. Yeah, oh, that was that was really. You know, people still talk to me about it. Yeah, to this I think day. we should. I think we should because you're so right. We have to be intentional about it. If we have to just overhype it, and it's not that we're. Some people say, you know, then you take away the from the message of Christmas, no. which we're not trying to do. We're just saying, no, we want you to get to the point of of excitement that you actually should be at. Yeah. Because you can you can stay. No, we want to keep it to the message, not think about it at all, not celebrate anything. Then I don't even really think you're living in the excitement that you should be living in exactly. if you're celebrating the birth of the Savior. Exactly. You should be. You should be. So if we're like, if we need to overhype it and and and, and have meals and get people together and to be genuinely excited about, it, I think that's when we're really at the place of cool. We can actually celebrate what God has done for us. I remember. I think it was, I've heard people say, you know, the word enthusiasm comes from some Greek word enthuse something like to yeah. enthuse yeah. and it's actually like a spiritual term to to put energy into something. Yeah. And I just love that. And what you're saying, because you know, I think you can find yourself being just you've heard it so many times. Jesus was born. We hear it, we hear it every day. Yeah. And it's just like it's like, yes, okay, cool, but I just can't wait to get on leave. Great. Yeah. And I think you're very right. by hyping up over the top, yeah. it kind of Yes, it's over the top, but it just brings us to a normalized level of what it should be. And I think you nailed it on the head there. Correct. I think we're all everybody's trying to live for leave right now, but don't let don't let the tiredness or the the inconsistencies of the year take away from what is from a season that should be categorized by excitement, enthusiasm, totally. passion, and a great time with mm. friends and family. Don't like the biggest mistake you can you guys can make and that we can make is to just cruise till Christmas and then let Christmas come and go and then just hope for a year that wasn't as bad as this one. Mm. A people of faith, uh, we trust God always for the best because we believe the best is yet to come. Amen. We believe our best Christmas will be this year. We believe our best year will be next year. And if we if we keep ourselves in a mindset and a and a frame of mind where we're just trying to survive mm. and just trying to make it i think then we're putting god in a box yeah and yeah, we're yeah. limiting the power that he has in our life and we're saying our circumstances they dictate our destiny we just don't believe that yeah we believe god is in complete control he's got the plan for our lives and why don't we show him with faith mm. that we're going to be excited for christmas we're going to be excited time. for the birth of his son and we know that 2021 is going to be a year that is big gonna time blow the blow the roof off big time you know, like as Christians, Phil, and we, you know, I, you know this, but we're called to be in the world, but not of the world. Yeah. Uh, the New Testament writes about how we are foreigners, we're aliens in this world because mm. our home is heaven. Yeah. I remember you singing that song all the time. Heaven, heaven is, is our home. home. <laughs> um, Great song. And, and we're called to live in the reality of heaven, but we're traveling through the earth. Mm. And so our circumstances on earth will not always be great, but we can still celebrate with our heavenly reality. Mm. And I think that's even what Christmas is you know, is for us, is us, hey, it doesn't matter what, what is actually happening. This The truth is this happened. Jesus happened. Yeah. God happened to the planet. Yeah. And it's a joyful thing for us to celebrate. Mm. If at the first Christmas, God would send an angelic host to announce the arrival of the King of Kings and the yeah. Lord of Lords to a bunch of shepherds in a field somewhere. <laughs> you talk about over the top, that's over the, that top. over the top. An angelic host. Wait for a bigger crowd to show up, God. Totally. Why not go sing that song in Jerusalem? Yeah, go, to you the, know? go to the city center, go to, the, go to Rome. Exactly. But he chooses a field. In a random field yeah. with two sh- with shepherds. And who knows, maybe they were like, you know, 
really enjoying the night, but just that is over the top. But I just think God is always trying to get us to live on his page mm. rather than us to try to squeeze Christmas into our page yeah. and the reality onto our agenda. Yeah. And I think this is a great opportunity. Mm. I think Christmas, Easter, those moments, even Mother's Day, Father's Day, those are key mm. moments. Yeah, key moments. It's not like we only celebrate our moms once a year, no. but it's the time that we can go ramp it up over the top to just show our appreciation we need to be reminded to celebrate yeah no we do we do i know i do because i can you can get into yeah. the humdrum the the rhythm of life yeah and you oh flip wait when last did i actually celebrate yeah. something have yeah. fun with something yeah. um so that being said what's the christmas decorations looking like in your brand new garden this year christmas decorations in the garden we actually haven't got anything yet but this the, just having this conversation i'm feeling challenged i'm feeling like, i'm I feeling feel like I'm, a I'm, reindeer yeah i've underperformed I'm, i've underperformed <laughs> drastically the thing is though when you've got two puppies at home oh, yeah. that destroy most things i've got to pick you know what it doesn't it doesn't mean i can't have decorations it just means they need to be tall yes and and out of biting out of biting reach but no i think fairy lights fairy I'm, i think i feel challenged for fairy lights think, at least i think fairy lights at least we should do that i think we need to get some sort of a critter if it maybe if it's a small Santa Claus, oh. maybe if it's a reindeer, could as in like a, a decoration. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I'm no. like, you can have this like mongoose now yeah. running in your garden. <laughs> I don't know. No, I can't have any more animals. But but I I need to, I need to lift I need to lift up my game definitely yeah. and 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 actually just move into the season with a bit of expectation. And it's yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so funny you say that because um, I've got a tree. We've got a Christmas tree that we're gonna film right in in for our Christmas yeah, service. Yeah. Uh, that Christmas tree is older than I am. You're lying. Whose tree is it? It was my grandparents' tree. And wow. no word of a lie, it was there before I was born. Wow. I actually have no idea how old it is. It smells like Christmas because it's it's like it's had the same <laughs> smell for the last couple of years. I don't know if that is like I've cool had the tree. I, I I think it's a bit of both. Okay. I'm like babe, we need a new tree. <laughs> but I love our tree, yeah. but maybe we can just use it somewhere else. Yeah. I just want a massive tree. I want yeah, like I want a, a bigger one. tree than the one that's behind us Why right now. Why can't we do what the Americans do and just walk into some open field? I guess we just don't have those trees. Yeah, anymore. we don't have those trees. They have a lot of forests. There. And you just hack down somebody else's tree. Just in hack down a tree and go for it. Um, but just... just uh, now I've gone completely off. Um, but yeah, just decor, the, the decor. Tree. Yes. Um, I'm like... Oh, this year we're gonna go big for Christmas in our garden. I'm putting lights everywhere. I'm doing, and then I'm like, I check the budget, and I'm like, I guess we could, you know, get some tinsel. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get a string or two of tinsel. What I think also people should be doing is finding the classic Christmas movies. If you are, if you have, you haven't got a Christmas movie array. What's your favorite? Up. I love Elf uh, with Will Ferrell. I, I just can't. Ah, oh, I struggle, man. I struggle with him. And I then struggle. there's, and then there's the classic. Uh, Santa Claus movies. What's that? What's that actor's name? Is it Tim Allen? Tim Allen. Tim Allen. So, so when he's Santa Claus, then it's legit. For me. Is that the one where he like shaves, but his beard grows beard back? Beard goes back immediately. <laughs> so, so those, and I think there's two or three of them. Yeah. Those are those are vintage, vintage. And then Netflix will always drop some hopeless romantic, of course, uh, movie that that I mean for our modern viewers, you guys can tuck into that. But you have to find your Christmas movie, and then you got to go. I, I don't know if it's okay to say this. Four Christmases is just one of the funniest. I don't know. I've, I still haven't seen. It. It's just one of the funniest movies uh, out there, and that gets me in the Christmas. That gets me in the Christmas mode. Do you know what's so sad though for us in South Africa though is that we can't wear the ugly Christmas sweater. We don't have that. We, we no, it's too. It's like a thousand degrees in the shade. True. You be sweating. We've you know, got a different style Christmas. We got it. It's like board shorts, flip flops. But what someone should come out with <laughs> is like sleeveless hoodies. Yes. Like ugly sleeveless hoodies with a reindeer for Christmas with a reindeer on it, yeah. or a Springbok with Christmas lights. I don't know. A springbok does kind of look like a reindeer. It does. I think that's an idea right there. Any viewers listening? We could hatch some plans. Yeah. No, Merry it. Merry Christmas, <laughs> right? <laughs> Man, we we are just we're just hyped. We're yeah, just, no, it's going to be a good time. We're just excited about Christmas. It's going to be a good time. That's kind of the heart. Though that, that's the heart behind this podcast and this episode. It's to mm. it's to be excited. Yeah. It's the it's the it, jingle it, bells. Jingle. You got to jingle bells this That's season. Right. It's a, it's we can be generous. We can be optimistic. Yeah. We can be enthusiastic about Christmas. Let's be intentional mm. about celebrating and let's put like you, like you put put so mm. well. Let's overhype it. Let's mm. put things in place. Let's put decor. Maybe you're not a big decor guy. Do decorations yeah. this year. 
get the sp- get the atmosphere going because then i think only then do you put yourself in a in, in in the right frame of mind to really understand that this really was the day where hope was born for us that's so good i could that's just beautiful the way you put that i think the fact that we must i think going over the top is right being uncomfortable this christmas yeah Jesus. so w- which means just take one step beyond like you, you know i'm terrible on the dance floor i don't want to dance Ooh. publicly i do not want to dance publicly but if i go I dance my wife loves it. Oh, really? So just imagine now, you don't, you're not into decor. What's the big deal? Yeah. I can celebrate Christmas in my heart. You can, but you can take one step over, yeah. decorate your dog. I don't know, give your Very dog a, a antlers. Light, antlers. Totally. There you go. And it's a bit uncomfortable, but you've done something. Yeah. And I think even generous in generosity, can you, give, can you be uncomfortably generous? Yeah. Can you give like Jesus gave yeah. or how God gave? Yeah. Um, and I just think those are the key things that we can take into Christmas. So we said celebrate, yeah, celebrate, celebrate Jesus, yeah. read uh, some scripture like Luke chapter 2 in preparation. Um, overhype yeah. is something that we said. Um, and then what was the other one? Be generous. Be generous. Be generous. Include someone into your world. Yeah. love to know even from, from you guys who are listening and watching, what are your plans this Christmas? Yeah, we would love to know. Um, connect with our community yeah. on Instagram at the 167 podcast yeah. uh, or leave a comment in YouTube or leave a comment on your um, on your podcasting app. Yeah. But yeah, we'd love to know. What are the ways that you guys celebrate Christmas? What are That's some, right. Have you got some tips for us? How can we, yes. how can we enthusiastically uh, get ready for Christmas? Does, does your family have any really cool traditions that you guys do? Um, I'd love to learn because I don't have too many of those. So if you guys have really cool That's traditions, cool. let us know. Um, uh, but we, we are hot today. Our heart is to just communicate. Let's get ready for what we know is going to mm. be an amazing Christmas. Awesome. Let's have a great time. Together. Love it. Merry Christmas yeah. and a happy new year. Happy new year and Merry Christmas.